The following is a review for critical, analytical, and educational purposes only, and is protected under Article 17 and 107 in the United States Fair Use Code. This video is not an infringement on copyright. Please enjoy the video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 2014. Any viewers watching this video from America will understand that January and February are normally a dumping ground for movies that nobody cares about, it's too early for summer, and it's too late for Oscar contenders, so where else is going to be put there? However, in the UK, this is a great time of year for films because we get all of the Oscar contenders showing up here late, so thankfully there is plenty to talk about for January 2014 releases. First up, on the very first day of 2014, we have Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. This is the fifth movie in the Paranormal Activity franchise and is a Latino-centric spin-off. <sighs> okay folks, let, let me be blunt here. There have been four Paranormal Activity movies before this one, and none of them have been even close to good. In fact, all of them have been pretty dreadful pieces of horror entertainment. Well, entertainment in quotation marks. None of them are scary, they're all poorly written, the found footage gimmick isn't even handled very well, and they just keep getting lazier and lazier. So, will this one be better? Early reactions are saying that it could reinvigorate the franchise, but none of the movies were good enough to begin with. The franchise has been going on for six hours if you add up all of the runtimes, and it's not evoked anything more than a mild startle from me, because they're not scary. I fell asleep during the second and third one, whereas The Conjuring from last year creeped me the hell out within five minutes of starting. Maybe The Marked Ones is good, but if the previous movies are anything to go by, it's gonna be dreadful. At least, like I say, from my perspective as someone who cannot even begin to see the appeal of the previous movies, even from an objective standpoint. Am I going to see this movie and give the filmmakers my money? Pfft, I'd rather shit in my hands and clap. Last Vegas. What if the cast of The Hangover were all Academy Award winners? Well, that's essentially the joke of Last Vegas, with esteemed award-winning actors doing the dumb drunk stuff seen in other party movies. And you know what? That could be enough. The trailers for this look pretty entertaining, and it might be worth checking out. This movie has received mixed reviews though, so you should only see Las Vegas if its novel premise is something that interests you. It interests me, so yeah, I'm gonna check this out. Oh, I haven't been this hungover in 30 years. <laughs> Everything's spinning. I know. <sighs> Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom. Oh boy, this is going to be a tough one to talk about. What would have started out as a biopic simply detailing Nelson Mandela's life now has a lot of expectations on its shoulders because it was released a week before the man's death. In fact, Nelson Mandela died during the London premiere and the audience were informed during the end credits. This is going to be a highly publicised movie, which may be unfair since it didn't really pick a fight with anybody, but that's fate, I guess. Anyway, Long Walk to Freedom has Idris Elba as Mandela telling the story of his life. It's done well with critics, but it does have the inherent problem with making a biopic when the person in question is still alive, as this movie was being made when Mandela was alive. So it's apparently a bit too sentimental and a little bit toothless, but from what I've heard, it is a fitting tribute to a very great man, and Idris Elba is apparently going to be an Oscar dark horse this year. There is only one way forward, and that is peace. I have walked a long walk to freedom. Twelve Years a Slave Yes, the UK is only just getting this movie, so there's not really anything I can say about it that hasn't already been said. It's one of the most critically acclaimed movies of last year by a great director with a great cast. I can guarantee that it won't be for the weak-hearted as Steve McQueen is not a director who pulls punches. So yeah, go see it. Delivery Man 
Vince Vaughn stars in a comedy drama about a man who has fathered over 500 children because of sperm donations, and 142 of them have filed a lawsuit against him, and hijinks ensue as Vince Vaughn tries to be a good father to all of them. <laughs> Okay, I don't really know what to make of this one. Vince Vaughn is a good actor, and he seems well cast here, but the critical response hasn't been that good, mainly because it's a remake of a 2011 French-Canadian movie, so maybe remaking a two-year-old movie isn't the best thing to do. But I think in a month filled with so many dramas, maybe a time-passing comedy like this could be what people need. Who knows? The Railway Man Based on the true story of Eric Lomax, The Railway Man stars Colin Firth as a man who was a Japanese prisoner of war during World War II who survived but is suffering severe trauma, and he finds one of the men responsible for what happened to him. Now, if you know your history, then you know that Japanese torture methods during World War II were simply barbaric. Seriously, just reading about the stuff that happened can be very difficult, and The Railway Man doesn't look like it's going to pull any punches. Plus, it has a great lead cast with Colin Firth, Nicole Kidman, Jeremy Irvine, and Stellan Skarsgård. This looks really, really good, and it's done well with critics, so maybe you should check it out. But like 12 Years a Slave, it probably won't be a fun experience. The Wolf of Wall Street. How does this actually work? There's a big money sign. They get launched at the time they stick. Yeah. This is their gift, okay? They're built to be thrown like a lawn dart. One, two, three! Stop. Okay? Safety first. Safety is, safety is first. Okay. We don't want to get a bad reputation. Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio team up again for this black comedy based off the memoirs of Jordan Belfort. This movie looks lewd, despicable, in very poor taste, and bloody awesome. It probably won't get much Oscar love because of how extreme it can be, but it looks set to be a hell of a lot of fun. And it's Martin Scorsese. Get your ass in the movie theatre for three hours and enjoy a master of his craft on top form. August, Osage County. Okay, this one could go either way. It seems like one of those movies where a studio just took a pre-existing script, in this case the Tracy Letts play of the same name, and simply got actors to fill the roles while the cameras were filming. While the crop of talent is brilliant with Meryl Streep, Julia Roberts, Hugh McGregor, Chris Cooper, Abigail Breslin, and Benedict Cumberbatch, a lot of critics that I trust seem to despise this thing. I'd say give this one a miss and see one of the other Oscar darlings instead, but make up your own mind on it. Grudge Match. Rocky Balboa and Jake LaMotta team up in a fight that nobody was asking for. That's the entire crux of the movie. The guy from Rocky and the guy from Raging Bull are finally going to have a boxing match, or at least the actors are. Sure, Escape Plan a few months ago had Campy Schlock on its side, and the true union of two action movie titans, but this just seems like a desperation move to recreate the Expendables. It could be a distracting novelty, but like I said, no one was asking for this, and judging from the trailer, it just seems like Rocky Balboa again, except with less heart, less skill, and a few more jokes. Inside Llewellyn Davis. With the Coen brothers, for me, it could go either way. When they hit, they really hit, but when they miss, god damn do they miss. This movie gives us a snapshot in the life of Llewellyn Davis, a struggling musician in New York trying to find success. The Coen brothers seem to do well with basic setups, and this seems about as basic as you can get, so this could be one to see. The critical praise for this movie has been off the charts, but then again, the critics loved True Grit and it even got nominated for Oscars, but no one seems to remember it now. Probably because it wasn't very good. Sorry, got distracted. But yeah, this may be good. Maybe. Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit. Another film that could go either way. Based off the late Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan series, the movie is directed by Kenneth Branagh, whose last action movie was Thor, so that's a good track record. And it also has a good cast, with Kevin Costner, Kieran Knightley, and Branagh himself starring as the villain. 
Oh yeah, and Chris Pine is in there as well. This has been dumped out in January in the US and the UK and it isn't an Oscar contender, which is already a bad omen, and the trailers haven't really suggested anything more than a bog standard spy thriller, so I would wait for the reviews on this one before making up your mind. I, Frankenstein. Okay, this is probably going to get mauled by critics, like most epic fantasy action movies based off of well-known pre-existing properties, like Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, which is awesome, Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters, which is also pretty awesome, but you know what? I, Frankenstein looks pretty good. Sure, it's going to end up as disposable schlock, but it looks like it has a great sense of flair, a lot of atmosphere, and some good production values. This will not be a masterpiece, but in a month filled with so many heavy dramas, this could be a good way to just relax and watch bright colours for two hours. So yeah, I'm rooting for this one. Just don't suck I, Frankenstein, and we will get along just fine. Come with me. Our army monsters like me, tens of thousands of them, could mean the end of all mankind. This ends tonight. Lone Survivor. And rounding off January is another late Oscar contender based off the non-fictional account of Operation Red Wings in 2008, where Navy SEALs attempted to capture a notorious Taliban leader during the War on Terror. To be honest, this does seem okay, and director Peter Berg is a good filmmaker, but it feels like a few years too late to tell this story, especially after Catherine Bigelow seems to have the market cornered on War on Terror movies, and this one doesn't seem to stand out much, which is a shame because Mark Wahlberg is a great underrated actor. This could be good, in fact it could be very good, but I don't see it standing out from its contemporaries. So there we go, a very busy January with lots of movies to see. The essential viewing movies seem to be 12 Years a Slave, The Railway Man, and The Wolf of Wall Street. And if you want to avoid Oscar movies, then there is Last Vegas and I, Frankenstein. And if you know someone that you really, really hate, then trick them into seeing Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. So what movies are you looking forward to in January 2014? Please leave your comment below, like this video because it really helps me out, and please subscribe for more movie news, reviews, and analysis. I'll see you guys next time.